You're very there welcome you along to Trader Chat. Um, we've just been um, on the verge of uh, watching a race, actually, that Flynn Goward was on a 33 shot at Strasbourg. And it only was. Nearly pit. Yeah, yeah, just got pipped. Uh, I'd like to say I pipped out myself, but I didn't follow some shrewd judging. But uh, yeah, 33 folk at Strasbourg. You can't, uh, can't complain with a 33 to 1 place at this time in the morning. 11.34, eh, Johnny? It just goes to show you, like, it, this game just never sleeps. And we're, we're waking up to do the trader chat or whatever, and he's like, I, I, can you can you just take a little bit of a 10-minute break here because I have something at Strasbourg at, at 11.20. It's not even the PM yet, and we're back in the Strasbourg. I want to say to you, though, before we get to the series stuff, Arsenal's renaissance, revival. What is going on? Unbelievable, eh? Um, fantastic watching as an Arsenal fan, obviously. Um, and look, we've got some interesting fixtures coming up. Our next one is against Liverpool, uh, so that'll be an interesting fixture. Um, just see how, how we do perform against a very decent side, um, as opposed to we, we've had a decent run of games. Obviously, the last very good side we played with City and we got beat. Mm. Um, so it will be interesting to see how we fare against Liverpool and even West Ham, actually. Me, me, uh, me and my old man actually put tickets to go to that in the middle of December. So oh, nice. Should be a decent game to go and watch against West Ham. Kind of similar uh, points in the table. I know West Ham slightly above us, but um, on, the, on the back of the kind of uh, of the games uh, last week, we've actually had some movements in the market. I guess we'll, we'll, uh, we'll start with the Premier League as we've obviously started talking about Arsenal. Um, top four finish is the market of interest when you look at Arsenal and West Ham. Uh, you've got City in there at 100 on, uh, Liverpool 25 on, 16 on Chelsea, 10 to 11 United. They were 8 to 15 the last time we spoke, Johnny. Yeah, so right now, they, I'm very, very confident right now that Man United will not finish in the top four, but I, I'm probably also confident that Solskjaer will be gone and the new manager who comes in, whoever it is, should have enough um, armory there to get this team to finish in the top four. That's the problem with, with these long-term bets. I think managerial changes do make a difference. But I think I did say at the time after Arsenal had lost their first three or whatever, I, I can't remember what price they were for the top six, but that they just had a sticky run. And in fairness to Arteta, um, he's gotten them very solid defensively. And what price are they now for the top four? Because I've been on the radio a little bit of late saying that I definitely make them contenders, as well as Spurs potentially, if Conte can kind of get them playing because they're not that far off the pace. Uh, five to two Arsenal for the top okay. four. Um, seven to two West Ham and then six to one Spurs. Spurs were nines. They've shortened in after the Conte news, um, and then Arsenal obviously shortened in after Arsenal just playing well. West Ham also shortened. United are the big drifters at ten to eleven from eight to fifteen. That's a big move out uh, for Man United. And we'll see a lot, a, a lot of uncertainty there. And then when you talk about Arsenal, we spoke, the, um, we spoke about Arteta for the first few trader chats of the year. Um, and he was favourite to go next. And there's what been, is what, that market now? I know what five five managers that have gone. We haven't actually gone back up because obviously we just had the news of Stephen Gerrard going to Villa. Mm -hmm. um, we actually saw some, some late money for Stephen Gerrard going to Villa. Uh, we we got put right in that market and actually did a few quid on it. Um, so some of the shrewdies were on uh, Stephen Gerrard's come to the Premiership, and we also actually laid it in our New Year's markets, uh, which we'll have up this New Year as well. But last New Year we had loads of New Year specials so to happen in in the calendar year. Um, we actually had uh, Stephen Gerrard come to a Premier League club at eleven to two, um, oh, and we had some. Uh, yeah, we we did lay some decent bets at eleven to two actually, uh, which some, some of the traders might not be too proud of. But in, you, it's, you it's all in hindsight. It to happen? Yeah, it's you know, expect. I mean, he's going to go to Liverpool. You'd imagine mm. at some time. But would he have taken a Premier League job? And what job would have been available? He's not that long in, in the range mm. of the job per se. Um, what about what about the Solskjaer kind of to leave markets so or next manager? How are we on that? I presume there's something going on there. Uh, I would just have to have it. Here we go. We have got it up. Uh, there's actually been talk of Brendan Rodgers this morning. Lots of talk. Um, I think it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, when you're thinking of a long-term plan, um, he, he is a manager that, that you'd probably want to build a bit of the team around um, and, and actually give, uh, give a good bit of time. We know with these uh, United managers, because of the longevity of having Fergie in, um, they don't just want to churn managers out after a couple of months like they would in a Chelsea for example um, so Rodgers is into even money so levels your devils uh, Brendan Rodgers Zidane in there at 5-1 to one, can't see that uh, Pochettino 7-1 to one, and then you're 9-1 to one bar so a lot of talk about Brendan Rodgers this morning and even money under the specials part of the site uh, we've also got the next Norwich manager up on site so to replace Daniel Clark um, a lot of talk about Fran Lampard here it'd be great to see uh, Frankie Lambs and Stevie G going up against each, each other wouldn't it he's 8-13 yeah. to 13. Uh, then you're three to one bar in that market. Uh, Dean Smith's actually six to one in that market, even though he's just lost a job at Villa. Um, but how could you predict that five jobs would change hand already and none of them are, are uh, 
Mikel Arteta. We're, we're only in early November, so this has mm. kind of almost happened in the space of a month. The Farc one was interesting because um, obviously there are a couple of Irish players playing for Norwich, one of whom are Mova Medelli, um, he's placed a lot of faith in, who he's actually started in the last two games. They win a game, and clearly it's one of these ready ups and that they win, they have their first win, and then he sacked. It's like, well, you know, what, what's going on here? I'm after winning the game, and um, mm. it just goes to show how crazy the Premier League is because. Let's be honest, Solskjaer should probably be gone if there are five managers gone. Do you think he'll be gone by Christmas? Not really. I think I'll think stick with him. No, no, no. I think at United, it's got to go really bad. Um, I'm not sure Rodgers would leave mid season. I don't think he's that type of manager, especially when he's kind he's of. He's already doing, done the Celtic. It. Yeah, but I just don't think he would do it in the Prem, especially with Leicester. After I think he'd do. Leicester's it. been through. I, I, think. <laughs> I, I think he'd completely do it. Um, I've had this debate with um, a few uh, characters in the radio that I don't think Rafa Benitez would take the Man United job, hypothetically, if it were ever offered to him, mm. as he's so much of a Liverpool legend. I think with Rodgers, it's a bit different. I think he doesn't really owe Liverpool anything in terms of, I think the fans have sort of mixed feelings about Rodgers, and also how far more can he bring Leicester, and this is a massive job. And regardless of what, they have very good players, they're going to have financial backing, 100% think he'd take it. But I think... Um... A, I don't think that United get rid of Solskjaer. I mean, it's got to get really bad. I think it's bad. It. It's, no, no, no. Bad. But, well, no, no, it's bad now, but it's got to get horrific. Hang, hang on a second. They played Liverpool at home. They were they were disgraced. They were humiliated. Mm. They were, to my mind, they were humiliated more against Manchester City because Manchester City took pity on them and didn't really try very hard. There were two humiliating games. In between all of this, you have games against Atalanta when they were very lucky to win, very mm. lucky to draw. Their form has been rubbish for about two months now. And it's not going to get better. And the hierarchy will be saying, we're not going to make the top four. We don't really care about winning the league. We need to get into the Champions League. We're not going to make the top four, so we get rid of them. Yeah, but at what point do you say that you're not going to get into the top four? Even right now, get rid of them. Well, right now. Did, did, yeah. you not, did you not it's just say, yeah, did you not just yeah, say they were yeah, 8 to 15? To they were 8 to 15. They were probably short than that. They're now mm. 10 to 11. So the trajectory is gone. They'll be 2 to 1 shortly. No, well, depends on their results. But for me, for it to get really, really bad is when they start getting a bit like getting humiliated by uh, by your mid-table teams. When you start, I know, I know, I know they paid like. Everton and 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 they could have got beaten by Everton. But I think it's going to take some really poor results against really really poor teams. But in terms of Premier League standards, kind of bottom half teams, I think at that point then it's gone too far. But let's, let's have moment, an even this, point that he's gone by the end of November. Oh yeah, go on then. Easy. An even point. Yeah. Your your craft yeah, yeah, yeah. IPA. Oh yeah, craft IPA would be lovely. But I think he probably stays probably to the, the end of the one. season. I don't think they'll do it. Um, I think that he will go at at the end of the season if they don't get top four, and then they can really regroup. I don't think United are the type of team to, um, especially one of their kind of club legends. Um, so I, I I think he will stay. I think he should go. If if you speak uh, to any of the kind of Man United fans we have in the office, you speak to JV, our kind of head of sports. Uh, he would be uh, very happy to see the back of Oli on a Solskjaer. And I think a lot of Man United fans will, but we do have next manager betting on site if you did want to check that out. Uh, just a few movers in the Prem for the so weekend. Just, just have a talk with yourself now because you're going to have to buy me an IPA by the end of the month. And I want it to be not, not one of these poncy ones you get from Lidl or Aldi, one of the fancy 7.2% jobs. Well, like a little brew dog number or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go for yeah. that. Yeah, there you go. A little brew dog number. Do. A little hazy Jane, actually. Uh, yeah, hazy Jane is one of my favourites. A little brew dog. Um, some of the movers from the Premier League at the weekend, just after some of the results that we had, Man City four to five from eleven to eight. Um, so really showing back in, uh, back into a solid um, case of odds on uh, to win the Premier League. Uh, Liverpool four to one from three. They've drifted out, having lost some ground. Uh, West Ham um, eight to eleven from eleven to ten for a top four finish. Uh, and like wow. I said, uh, three to one from five to one for the top four. After that, eight impressive to eleven display. for top four. I oh, know uh, yeah. eight to eleven, eight, eight, eight to eleven for top six and three to one top, top six, four. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I, actually, sorry, they've shortened further from three to one. So they're now five to two uh, for top four. So um, even uh, shorter there. So uh, just some in, in, interesting prices um, in in terms of the Premier League for the weekend. Some some big moves and shakers. And it's going to be a really exciting season, I think, uh, for the rest of the season. And just while while we're on top of football, we do have. Uh, a build a bet uh, offer where you place a ten pound build a bet and get a five pound free bet. That's on the England Albania game tonight. Uh, we do have these on the internationals and on some of the Premier League games, so do check that out on the website. Uh, we've also got two good offer, which is on the Premier League and on, and on all the uh, kind of decent leagues. Do check the terms and conditions there. Uh, but on these um, in, internationals where there are really short price favourites, it's worth doing the build a bet because it does give you something 
uh, to kind of cheer on and, and you can make something out a bit of a price of first goal score or the overs on, on the goals and their player cards. Uh, and if you're placing a £10 build a bet and you're getting a £5 free bet, then all the better. Internationals. Uh, yeah, so, so that's actually on the England-Albania uh, game tonight. Um, and Portugal tonight as well. Got, got, got a couple of uh, interesting games coming up playing Luxembourg. Yeah, so loads to, uh, to kind of get stuck into in terms of the internationals. We've also got the group winners up on the site. Um, and obviously, if you want to bet the World Cup outright, you can do that as well. But internationals to fill the gaps between we get back to the Premier League stuff. And the Premier League's been absolutely absorbing this season. Mm. We've, um, you know, we have a title race. We've a major, major battle for the top, top four or whatever. And um, just sounds like looking at last weekend, it looks like a lot of clubs are going to be beating teams that are a lot higher than them in the table, which is brilliant. Um, racing. Let's talk last week's movers. How was the Breeders' Cup? Some absolute perlers. But by the time when I was talking to you, sort of mid Saturday, you were struggling a bit. Then you got some dinger results. Obviously, Tarnow absolutely flopping. And um, some fifty to one shots. A couple of Japanese winners. And I don't know if you had a load, load of Japanese clients with uh, Ben Keats' firm. But how did it go all in all? Uh, it was a roller coaster, really. Um, it, I never felt like it got away from us, and I never felt that we got too far in front. So. Um, it was, yeah, it was real kind of nip and tuck stuff. I'm just going to get the results up just so I can remind myself why actually happened. I tried to block that evening out of my mind, having uh, words 12 in the afternoon until about two in the morning. Uh, and I must say on the Friday, um, the last result where they, um, where, they, where the favourite got pulled out and then they re-ran it was absolute carnage in the office. It really carnage. was. I mean, trying to work that out at three o'clock in the afternoon would be one thing. We're trying to work it out at half one in the morning um, after a long, long shift is... Uh, is very very difficult. Yeah, we actually ended this up. This is how it should be. Results. Like, yeah, this is how it should be. And we don't want like we don't want algorithms. We don't want models. We don't want computers. We want like people like you at the coal face, brain absolutely fries, trying to figure out something as, bana- as bizarre as this at three in the morning or whatever it is. It was an absolute nightmare to be honest. I mean, it did cost us a few quid. Um, we didn't lay the uh, I say the eventual winner. The uh, the recorded winner tis a bomb a huge amount. So it wasn't a huge uh, kind of loser for us, but. Paying out on the favourite was obviously a big loser for us. So uh, we obviously did our money on both of the results. So it did cost us a few quid. Um, I can't actually find the, the, the name of the uh, modern games it was, wasn't it? Mm. Was the horse. I, I did just block out of my mind completely. But that, that was a terrible result uh, in terms of having to pay off for both. But we thought it was the right thing to do because you can't, you can't have a bet on a horse and watch it actually win the race and not be paid out. Uh, it, it is a difficult one, Flynn, as well for bookmakers because um, there's almost this kind of obligation to pay, pay out as this kind of a justice payout. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you were the guy in the pub who's laying the bet to your mate like, and you're trying to get the points in, you actually end up you end up copping a fair bit of money if you have to pay out twice. So that, like, I often see it from, from both angles as well, although this was a complete shambles, to be fair. It was. It, it was really, really tough. I mean, it, it was something that I've actually never seen before as well. And our head of trading was in there and he's he's been at Labrooks and stuff like that. And he said that he'd never seen anything like it. So it was interesting trying to work that one out. And then all the rule fours on top, because you had a four to one shot come out. Um, so, yeah, it, it was a really tough result that on the uh, on the Friday, which meant we were slightly behind going into the Saturday. Um, and like I say, it was just a yo-yo on, 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 on the Saturday, just to spin through the results here. I could tell you just off the top of my, off the top of my head where we won. So, uh, Gamine getting beat was a fantastic result. That was the 8 to 13 shot. We won a good few quid on that race. Golden Power was a terrible result. We had a good bit of 11 to 4 there. That, that was a six figure loser easily. Um, Life is good, and, and another poor result. Um, Love's Only You was a decent result. Um, we laid uh, Love small uh, in, the, in that race. So the, the Japanese getting the job done there was a great result for us. Um, Aloha West was a good result in the, in the next race we played uh, Jackie's Warrior the favourite pretty heavily around 10 to 11 that went off 8 to 13 um, Space Blues terrible result 15 to 8 um, the next race was a decent result uh, Latruska was the one that got beat there the uh, short mm-hmm. one uh, Yubir was a decent result again in the next and then uh, Nick's Go was a pretty poor result in the last race although most of the money was for essential quality so real kind of to and fro stuff there the ones that were really bad results with decent prices. So like 15 to 8 Space Blues was 2 to 1 before that. Um, and then Golden Power around the 11 to 4 mark. So we actually did our money on the bigger oh. price favourites. I'll just say one thing on this, just watching it unfold and all that. Back in European horses at a track like like Delmar, is, it's fraught with risk. Um, you know, Ryan Moore had a couple of races that went so badly for him. Like, and it's almost like the gate speed you have to have there uh, compared to necessarily over here where you might have a big gallop and track this was this is a very very tricky track, and if you back, um, say if you back Love for example, you're basically on the back foot the whole way there, and you might back Tarnawa. It's another messy race, but when you take in like the hullabaloo of 
of um, the prelims and the fact that they have to travel over, acclimatise and all this. It kind of dawned on me many years later that like this, it's fraught with risk, essentially, bringing horses over there. I know Aiden did well in a couple of races, albeit not winning, but it's fraught with risk and you can just do your money on horses that probably should run a lot better, but just don't for whatever reason. And you're just like, well, now it's a Saturday night, I'm having a few pints, I'm down money and it's like, uh, you know, so yeah, you have to be careful. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And obviously gamble responsibly, even when you're having your pints and having a bet. But um, it, it, it's a really tough one, the Breeders' Cup. I mean, do you know what? There's nothing I hate more. If you, if you, I mean, I, I worked all of it, so I saw all of the analysis afterwards. And there's nothing worse than hearing the commentator watch it back or, or a pundit and say, oh, it was game set and match as soon as, as soon as you got to the front there. And, and it literally got to the front out the gates. And you're thinking, well... It's only game set match because it's gone and won the race, exactly. and then you're telling, and then and, and then you're telling me, I wish you'd said that about all the ones that went to the front and then got chinned, uh, like Jackie's Warrior. Uh, is is Sorry, a what, what, what age are you, Flynn? Uh, I'm 25. 25, and you're already that cynical and angry about some of the racing pundits. I love it. Wait until you're my age. I know it will, it will just get worse and worse, but mm. but it makes it even worse when you've done 200 grand on the race and then you're <laughs> and then you're looking at someone telling you it's game set and match from the gate you're like, not, not flain individually that is that is the firm what about lewis hamilton things are things are going p-tong for the big man and it looks like his it looks like his title is going away from him it does look pretty tough for old lewis hamilton at the moment doesn't it um the car just wasn't quick enough for them at the weekend i know they're quick during qualifying i think red bull had issues with with the back wing uh but they're just too quick he says uh, they are just too quick, and uh, Bottas was a bit weak into the first corner. And Verstappen managed to get around the outside on the racing line. The, the sticky grip and got the lead, and it was all over. Uh, Verstappen is now two to nine uh, from one to two to win the championship. Lewis Hamilton out to one hundred to thirty uh, was thirteen to eight uh, after the Mexico Grand Prix. And Red Bull in four to five to take the constructors' title. Perez is actually performing better, so that's helping them out uh, from nine to four. And Mercedes are ten to eleven, so tips on from uh, one to three. So some big moves in the F one. Uh, but whilst we're talking quick things, I think we need to get on to uh, Cheltenham this week, Johnny. We've got some fantastic cards coming up for the Paddy Power meeting at uh, Cheltenham. We do indeed some good Irish Raiders as well going over. There has been some mm. criticism of maybe some of the small fields. But, um, you know, I felt a bit of a buzz when a guy was, uh, he was plaguing me to get him tickets for Cheltenham. And I was like, well, I mean, obviously it's not going to sell out. Like, you, just, you, know, you could just buy the tickets here. I didn't actually come up uh, trumps as well for him, but... There are Irish going over, and after the two years of crap that we've had with this virus, it's great to have the buzz back and some Irish runners and some Irish uh, patrons going over to watch uh, the horses run at Cheltenham over the next couple of days. It certainly is, and we've actually seen some decent money around already, to be fair, and some good movers and shakers. Um, I will just um, have a look at the cards for tomorrow. Uh, we're obviously getting decks at the moment uh, for Saturday's cards, so I can't bring you a huge amount there. Um, I will just quickly spin through the races tomorrow just in terms of some movers, which, I mean, by the time this comes out, it could be shorter, but these are prices at time of recording. Uh, in the first race tomorrow, Art Approval, the money's been for that one, opened up at 10 to 1, it's now 5 to 1. Uh, that actually ran in the October meeting, um, but it's up in trip, um, and that one is obviously well fancied, has been betting already. That's into uh, second favouritism, uh, Paul Nichols has the favour there, is Scatman. Um, Stolen and Silver is uh, pretty strong in the second race at three to one. Uh, Magic Saint has won the race previously, has, has a similar prep, uh, is in there at 130. Not a huge amount of movers in that race. Uh, in the third race is where we have the match that is uh, My Drogo and Gin Online. Um, I mean, what can you make of that? It'll be great seeing My Drogo out, but you, you, you never want to see a match. It's not the greatest advert jump tracing, it's is it really? So, it's just so bizarre. I know, like the racing boys have done a story and this fancy foundation doesn't run. Okay, so prize money's not great. It's thirteen grand, um, and maybe my Drogo has sort of, um, you know, scared off potential rivals here. But at the same time, if you're a prospective owner, um, who even had a, a vaguely competent runner going into this race, you have all the buzz of going over to Cheltenham. Um, so what is it like? Second gets five, third gets three grand. So even even if you had a competent runner, and all this is obviously after time, and but at the same time. And I know field sizes are at a kind of a historic low in, in Britain. This isn't good. I mean, it's not that it's matches can be good and this isn't a bad race, but it's still a bit like, you know, anyway. Yeah, and I know my Drogo looks like he's going to be a fantastic horse, but he is making his chase debut around Cheltenham. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I, I'm not asking stuff to go wrong, but plenty could go wrong. Um, so you, you could pick the piece up. I mean, when you go back to when Fisselcrat was a novice, there was. I know. I think there was four in his novice race, maybe, but mm. this would crack. Would uh, just want to stay as hurdle, and, and horses are still turning up. It's been Marinero turned up that day, and then a couple more. So, um, 
yeah, it is very disappointing to see, and we won't uh, spend a huge amount of time on it because it is pretty depressing. Stuff, just, 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 just the, the only flip side I would say to this: match match races can be fascinating tactically and everything else, and the fact that there are only two runners at least it gets people talking, like because it is so unique. And um, so there's a kind of an inverse positivity from this, and that like it's a talking point. We're talking about it here. The match itself will be very interesting, but let's just hope there isn't another non-runner put it that way. Yeah, no, you wouldn't fancy a walkover, would you? I no. And certainly me standing on course tomorrow, I wouldn't fancy a walkover. Um, the 255 on the card is the uh, cross-country chase. We've actually seen money for Diesel Dallier, this one. Harry Bannister rides. Um, opened up at around 11 to 1 in the week. is now 11 to 2. Uh, that one we've seen some more money for. And also for freewheeling Dylan as well. It's pretty uh, much where it, where it was better, around 10 to 1 in the market. But uh, we did see some more money for that one. So freewheeling Dylan and Diesel Dallier are the two there that the money... Uh, the kind of shrewdish money has come for. Um, the, uh, the next race, the favourite's been Wheat Gelino Bello at 5-4. to four. Blazing Cow, the Charles Burns runner come, uh, coming over from Ireland um, after winning this uh, uh, big field last race. It's actually been popular betting from 6-1 to one to 9-2. to two. Off your rock, Ozo. That's a belter of a race. Uh, yeah, yeah. That should be a really good watch, that Ballymore trial. Uh, and then the last race on the card, not a huge amount of movements here, but we do have prices uh, on the website for that one. Uh, in terms of other races for the Saturday and the Sunday, uh, Nietzsche in the Paddy Power Gold Cup, uh, we laid small at 33 to 1, is now around 16s. Um, uh, sorry, we, uh, we laid a decent bet 16s, is now 12. Uh, so keep shortening Nietzsche. Uh, prices will be back off the site for the Paddy Power Gold Cup once we have uh, declarations. Protector is likely to be a favourite there, although you, you'd like to take him on in a big field, you'd think. Um, McElduff in the intermediate handicap heard on Saturday uh, laid at sevens is now around the 11 to 2 mark um, again that will be back on site after declarations but that was what's popular there and then Rouge Viff in the, in the Schler chase was another one around the 8 to 1 mark uh, for the race on Sunday uh, where you've got put the kettle on and move the Negra run in there so you have got some fantastic horses out you've also got Oscar Elite and under supervision both um, in the early decks for Sunday uh, so we should see some fantastic races and I can't wait to get going at Cheltenham Briefly, Robertson trying to defend his UK championship in the snooker, which will be interesting as well. Uh, he has a haircut like no other these days. Who's going to win it? Uh, let me just get the betting up. Do you know what? I know very, very little. Not a snooker it. man? Not really, no. Some, uh, some of the boys in the office love it. Judd Trump is favourite seven to two. Uh, Mark Selby's in there at 11 to two. Neil Robertson, as you mentioned, 11 to two. Ronnie O'Sullivan, six. And then John Higgins is 12. Um, he was the market mover, John Higgins. Um, that was... Uh, after a second consecutive finals uh, defeat in the English Open, but he was uh, 12 from 16. Um, so he's the mover in the UK Championship, and that gets underway on the 23rd. So if you are a snooker fan, there is some stuff to get stuck into there. But Johnny, do you want to finish with... Uh, let's finish with, uh, with a bit of racing. What I do just want to quickly say is that we do now have match bets on site within our race winner market. So do check those out. We are going to have match bets for most races. And we've also got each way extra just hitting the side. So we will have more derivatives um, as well as just the race winner market so there will be some more to get stuck into there although that race at Cheltenham I don't need to build the match bets because it's already there for you uh, with my Drogo and uh, we've also increased the picked offer from 25 quid to 50 quid on ITV races so if you finish uh, second beaten a uh, half a length or less on flat races and a neck or less on jumps races uh, no sorry half a length or less on jumps races and a neck or less on flat races uh, then you'll be refunded uh, your stake up to 50 quid. So that's, that's not a bad offer. Half a length or less on a jumps race. You'll have a lot of tight finishes this year for a nifty, um, you know, and it, all these money back specials do help. Exactly, exactly. And I think that we need to finish on the, uh, the horses to follow this season, one horse to be against, and then a the dark horse, Johnny. I'm going to start with you. The horse to follow this season. American Mike, uh, who won the bumper at Down Royal, had word for him before he did. He was unbelievable. I'm actually going to interview his, tra his owner later on. Um, what was the other one? One to avoid, is it? Uh, so one to be against. One to be against. Oh. And then a um, dark horse. One to be against. Um, maybe Manella Indo, because I think um, there might be a bit more depth to the challenge this year. He was obviously beating it down royal, but um, that one I hadn't talk, talk, thought about too much. A dark horse I'm going to give. No, he's not that dark. I think we spoke about him a couple of weeks back was my mate Mozzie for the Supreme. I thought he was very good at Navin. He's still learning on the job. Obviously, the race kind of fell apart for the second last year. For me, he was going to win anyway. Um, and I think that's definitely going to be his race. Two miles strong, two miles. The problem, like I know the road to Cheltenham is back on Race TV now. Like I have a serious problem with Cheltenham in that they've diluted races so much that like a lot of, I didn't derive much pleasure from Ireland winning 23-5 yes, last year when this season rather, uh, last season, um, when we had so many races that really there should be far more runners at Cheltenham. So like I, 
that's that's my problem with you know this whole Cheltenham narrative now. It's like, well, that's all well and good, but there could be like a five run or Ballymore or whatever it is in the day. So, um, anyway, there are my thoughts. Okay, so my mate Mozzie's 12 12 to Supreme after winning at the weekend. I thought he was pretty impressive and uh, looked like he probably liked the quick ground. I haven't dug into the breathing and stuff, but I thought he, he, his action would probably suit a little bit at Cheltenham. Um, if you did want to take on uh, Manella Indo, you're, you're 7 to 1 bar the favourite in the Gold Cup. Um, so, plenty of value uh, to be uh, trying to take there. And American Mike. Uh, for the bumper is the nine to two favourite. Oh my sure, god, it? that is ridiculous. Um, and if we're going to give mine, I mean, I'll, I'll start with my horse to be against. I've got two. One was American Mike, purely at the prices. Um, nine to two around the five to one mark for a champion bumper at Cheltenham this far away. If so many horses are going to come out, I know it's won the same races as your previous winners, but uh, I'd, I'd want to be taking one of those prices. If you're on a fancy price, then fair play to you, but. That price for a champion bumper this far away, I'd want to be taken on. Uh, the other one I want to be taken on would be Easy Land in the cross country. Um, I think he's got it all to do. Get uh, again beat uh, that far by uh, Tiger Roll uh, last oh my year. God, we're talking um, about t- t- taking a horse on for the year who's going to be running the cross country race in five months' time. Why well, yeah, you exactly. That? You'll be. Th- look, I don't mind talking about Cheltenham. People oh get really God. precious about it. Like, oh, we got we, like we got such a fantastic uh, card of racing. Yeah, great. We'll still talk about that, but. People still want to fantasise about Cheltenham, and that's what makes uh, Cheltenham the best, and that's what makes jump races so fantastic. I think I'm still I'm still going to the Tingle Creek next month. I still love the Tingle Creek. I still love the beach at Aintree. I still love the Grand National, but I'd still love to talk about Cheltenham this far out. I don't mind it at all. That's the Olympics. That's what everyone builds up to. There's great plots along the way, but we are going to get there eventually, and people love talking about it. I really don't mind it. Do you um, have your dark horse in? I do have a dark horse. My dark horse would be Oscar Elite. Um, he is entered to run this weekend, was entered to run in the Does He Know race uh, at the October meeting in Cheltenham, entered to run this weekend. Um, I think he's entered to run over a little bit shorter, though, off the top of my head. Um, so I'm not sure whether the trip's going to be ideal, uh, but we'll be interesting to see uh, how Oscar Elite goes. In fact, no, he he, he is entered in the three-mile race and he's entered okay. with under supervision. So um, I think that um, he's going to run a fantastic race. And if you just look at a price differential for the, for the Brown Advisory, uh, when we do uh, get to March, which I know you'd love to talk about, uh, we're 33 to 1 Oscar Elite, and then you're 12 to 1 for Nilia. There wasn't a huge amount between them um, in the uh, Alba Violet last year. Um, and Oscar Elite, I just think he's going to improve massively. And Connors, I wasn't in great nick last year, whereas he's firing this year. Um, um, and my one to follow would be Porticello for the Triumph. Uh, we've actually laid him pretty heavily for the Triumph, so I'll be hoping he doesn't win for the firm. Um, we've actually already got him for a six figure sum. He's 12 to 1 with us. He can get bigger out there. We are under Porticello. He did, hoping uh, he doesn't lead, lead win for the firm is a complete euphemism for I have backed him with someone else. Uh, I may have, but I'm <laughs> also, but but for for a, for a six figure sum, that's when I kind of put it to one side and say no. For the firm, I certainly won't, won't want it to be winning, especially for the small measly states that I have on. Um, but he did absolutely everything wrong on his um, first start in in the UK. He's trained by Gary Moore, so obviously with that Goshen tie for the uh, for the juveniles. Uh, did absolutely everything wrong, drifted for the off, was around 10 to 11, went off 6 to 4, so obviously wasn't expected to go and do anything massively spectacular. He hit every single hurdle when they were jumping slowly, and then when they started to pick the pace up, he started to jump really, really well. It's worth going and watching that race back. Um, he beat Magistrato over in France, um, who also came out on one of decent races, I think, at Chepstow. Um, so some, some decent enough form there. One to watch, he was also giving weight away on his first run, so he would be the one to follow for me for the season. Oscar Elite is a dark horse, and then I'll be taking on Johnny's horse to follow in American Mike and Easy's Land when we eventually get there. Um, you may be right, to be fair. 92 is very, very short, four, four months out. We will finish up on this, though. Do not be afraid to respond to this on Twitter or respond on our social channels. Who's more likely to cop the loss, the IPA? Oli Gunnar Solskjaer to be gone by the end of November. Bearing in mind how crucial the fixtures are, I think, you know, what was it, 69% maybe of Man United fans want him gone in the recent poll? I think I'm on an odds-on shot here, and I'm getting an even uh, an even IPA. The fact that I've taken evens about that is an absolute steal, by the way. Don't agree with you. I, I, agree I, 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 honestly, I think you're so wrong here. Okay. On that, note, on that note, uh, that was Trader Chatter. Yeah, Cheltenham the weekend, Flynn? I am indeed. I shall be travelling down at about 3 o'clock today. Um, and then we've got one pitch in tax. We've got one uh, on the bottom rail likely for the Friday and Saturday and probably on the top rail for the Sunday. So Lofty will be on that one. I'll, I'll, I'll be manning the, uh, the, the, the number three tax pitch. So do come around and see. I think uh, Mr Keith might be making an appearance on Saturday as well. 
Beautiful. So if you're in the beautiful Cotswolds, um, do call over to the Star Sports lads, maybe have a few wagers and see if this special is actually on offer uh, in, in the Tats area. Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer, even money to go in November. And this could be a special with Star Sports. You could double it up with uh, the jolly in the match, whether it's gin on lime or whether it's a good thing from the homeland. That was uh, Trader Chat with Star Sports. We shall be back next week. Thank you.